that if you declare of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he was a usurper who stole somebody else's position we say that you are misguided if you are annoyed with us what can we do but tax effects and we say that if you say that um, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was also a usurper we say that's double misguidance and if you compound that by saying that Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu was also misguided we say come on it's time to wake up from your sleep and we're not speaking these words with bitterness and with anger and with hostility we're speaking these words with sadness and it's because we call them the khulafa that we say that the imam who is to come will also be khalifa what is the implication now of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending to us a khalifa and saying to him that he will be from within your own ranks kayfa antum iza nazala alaykum numariyam wa imamukum minkum and your imam will now be from within your own ranks very clearly to me this hadith is anticipating a time will come when we will no longer have khilafah no that we will be ruled by those who are not Muslims there is no authentic Islamic rule anywhere in the world today because those who rule us are not Muslims where is the evidence? when last did you take up the charter of the United Nations organization and if you are in Iran and you listen to this lecture I'm talking to you I'm talking to you take up the charter of the United Nations organization and open it and read I believe it is 24 and 25 but I can be mistaken I've been traveling for five months now so I can make mistakes it could be 24 and 25 or 25 and 26 where the Charter of the United Nations says in effect in effect that in all matters pertaining to international peace and security Allah is not Al-Akbar no the Security Council of the United Nations is Al-Akbar meaning there is no authority above it that is shirk and so once you are a member of the United Nations organization your Amir al-Mu'mineen your Khalifa <laughs> your leader, your ruler, ultimate ruler is the Security Council of the United Nations hmm? and so you can call yourself an Islamic Republic like Pakistan used to do before it became an American Republic and I don't say this to ridicule the Pakistani people because I studied in Pakistan and my heart beats with the people of Pakistan who are imprisoned in Pakistan because they don't have the freedom to choose their own leader their leader is chosen in Washington by the Zionists and so a time is going to come when we, are not, we will be ruled by those who are not from within our own ranks so you had Amir al-Mu'mineen George Bush <laughs> but that's not going to last forever no when Imam al-Mahdi comes that's goodbye to the substitute that they gave us for the Khilafah Dajjal gave us the modern secular state 
and the modern secular state has replaced the Khilafa and all of mankind illa masha Allah have pledged their allegiance to the modern secular state loyal to the modern secular state and to its constitution and as a consequence have said goodbye to Allah and to the Khilafa but you and I have not done that in our hearts we are faithful to Allah and to his messenger and in our hearts we are faithful to Islam's model of a political state the Khilafa and in our hearts we long for that day when the Imam will emerge and the Khilafa will be restored is it possible for the Khilafa to be restored before the Imam emerges there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim that a Khalifa will die and there will be disagreement concerning succession I think you already guessed who is going to be hmm? there will be disagreement concerning succession and then a man will emerge out of Medina remember Medina eh? not Jakarta Medina <laughs> and he will hurry to Mecca and the people of Mecca will come out to him and urge him and try to force him to accept the bayah no we have problem here we have heard this word for years and years and years and years the word bayah has been put in something called the cold storage so we've got to go to the cold storage now and pull it out what is this bayah it is the pledge of allegiance which legitimizes the rule of the Khalifa that is bayah and it is an institution that is located in the Quran and in the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam when he accepts the bayah at that time he will confirm and proclaim himself to be Imam al-Mahdi now then I made this comment and I did not make this comment in any disrespectful way no I was merely speaking facts and if Imran is not allowed to speak facts what should he talk about I said that Mecca has never been a Shia city is that true or is that false tell me I never said that there are no Shia in Saudi Arabia and now you come to hit me with a left uppercut for something I never said please have some respect for your own intellect and don't quote people wrongly what I said is that Mecca has never been a Shia city is that true or is that false there is nothing to suggest to us that that situation will change in the future and that Mecca will transform itself and become a Shia city there is no evidence to support that and therefore we ask how can a people of Mecca who are not Shia how can they go out and pledge allegiance to a Shia if you have an answer I'd be happy to get the answer you can send me an email and I am not wearing any boxing gloves no this is not the age for that this is a reasoned discourse that is being presented tonight 
And so I conclude that the Imam cannot be Shia. This is my conclusion. If you differ with me, that does not mean that we should have boxing gloves fighting each other. No. Now then, the argument is raised that because the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam used the word Khalifa, a Khalifa will die. The implication is that the Khilafa will be restored before the advent of Imam al-Mahdi. But have you forgotten that hadith with which we began? كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ نُمَرِيَمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ Why should the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam say to us that this Imam will be from your own ranks when we already have the Khilafah? It has already been restored and our Imams are already from our own ranks. Why should he say that? My understanding is that the hadith is clear that prior to the advent of Imam al-Mahdi it is not possible to restore the Khilafah. No. And therefore when the word Khalifa is used a Khalifa will die. The Prophet alayhi salatu waslam is referring to a Muslim ruler. Who could it be? Oh, the answer is clear. <laughs> it has to be a Saudi king. Because there are 5,000 princes out there waiting, struggling, fighting to take over. And there is already sufficient evidence of internal conflicts and rivalries within the big Saudi clan. Hmm? So, a Saudi king will die. It can't be Fahad because he's already dead. <laughs> Would it be Abdullah? I don't think so. And I'll let you know why in a moment. When that Saudi king dies and there is disagreement concerning succession, it is at that time that Allah will send the Imam. Is the Imam born already? This is not arrogance on my part. No. When I say, I don't know and I don't want to know. So please don't send me emails asking me whether the Imam has been born already. What is important is that Allah places a cover and Allah conceals him and no one knows that he is the Imam until that moment arrives when the king, the, the Khalifa dies and there is disagreement and so on then he proclaims himself to be the Imam until that moment we don't know who is the Imam so is he born already? No, come on. I don't know and I don't want to know. Having disposed of these questions, now what are the implications of the advent of the Imam? The first and major implication of the advent of the Imam is that the substitute that Dajjal had created to replace the Khilafah, that substitute, your modern state, will now return to the garbage bin of history from where it came out in the first place. Why do I use such harsh language? What is the